Hi, JJ here with The Other Value. Welcome from New Zealand. Well, today we're going to look at what Monash Papro has recently been saying about Constellation Software. It's the first time I've ever heard him talk about Constellation Software. He thinks it's a good business, a great business, in fact. But I'm a shareholder of Topicus, which is a spin-off of Constellation Software. He doesn't own any Constellation Software shares, but it's really interesting to see what he says, especially in relation to Berkshire as well. He obviously respects the business, respects the founder, respects the management. So let's get straight into it. He was talking on the Investors Podcast with Stig Broderson just recently. I'll put a link in the description to that because it's a good long interview and Constellation Software was only a small part of it. So Manish and Stig are talking about company compensation. Manish mentions Constellation Software, how they have a really good setup. They don't give away equity. They pay the management and encourage a management to buy shares on the open market with after-tax money. And Manish mentions that Berkshire also does this, so it's a good setup instead of giving away equity like lots of Silicon Valley companies do, and he thinks it's a bad thing, but these two companies have a really good structure in terms of doing that, so they're not giving away all this equity all the time. Mona says it's become pretty standard in Silicon Valley to give away equity, lots of share compensation instead of using the company's cash, so the board said it's a good thing that they're not using cash. Companies like Berkshire and Constellation Software do a much better deal by shareholders, by not giving away a lot of equity. So he's pointing out here that Silicon Valley's overdosed on this giving away equity. He says it's a good thing that the gap accounting rules changed a while ago, so companies have to account for it, but it means that they moved to using adjusted EBITDA and adjusted income and adjusted whatever to to kind of not cover it up, but to account for it in different ways. But in general, he says it's suboptimal. He's not keen on these companies in Silicon Valley that do that. He's looking for the best companies that just do the right thing by shareholders. And he said CEOs don't often realize the value of the equity that they're giving away. He does say that even with this drag, some companies from Silicon Valley do well, even in spite of this huge compensation they're giving out. And we can think of examples of that. A lot of growth investors argue that it's okay because of these examples. The argument goes that if people have shareholdings, their employees, they'll work harder because they're part owners of the company. But that only goes so far. Indeed, if the CEO and the founder, or founder, CEO, founder has a big stake in the company, 20, 30% or more, then that's their align with shareholders. But giving away a lot of equity, he says it goes too far and it starts to have a negative effect. And Silicon Valley's overdosed on it in recent decades. This is where money starts to talk about Constellation software, how the plan in place that Constellation has got is a really good one, where management is encouraged, forced to buy shares with their own money. And there's a real skin in the game from management and from Mark Leonard, and it's worked out really well, and for Berkshire as well. The good structure that they're talking about with Constellation Software is that management has to buy their own shares on the open market with their bonuses. So the cash bonus, and then they have to buy back a certain amount of shares. And the CEO founder, Mark Leonard, doesn't take a salary. I mean, that's a really good sign when the CEO is not taking a salary. He's just got skin in the game in terms of equity in the company, and he's trying to grow that over time. And it's legendary also his travel plans. He's He said he's getting older. Mark Land is getting older now. When he has to fly between these, all these companies that they own, he's flying first class. But before that, he wasn't flying first class, and he certainly doesn't have a private jet or anything like that. doesn't fly private. So he's very conscious of shareholder value and not overspending on a stock compensation or anything else in the company. So Monash contrasts this situation with Larry Ellison at Oracle. So over the years, there's been a lot of stock-based compensation go to him. And he said he didn't need that. He would have done well over time because he, he was a significant owner, had a lot of skin in the game. So it was just a bonus, kind of diluted or didn't do well for existing shareholders over time and he says in comparison again with bill gates bill gates never had a huge compensation never took a huge salary so it's all based on the value of the company over time building that value of the company over time and not taking too much away from shareholders not diluting shareholders over time something to look for when we look at companies and then they talk about the market cap of Constellation Software. Stick points out that it's around a $50 billion company. It's quite big. So investing in it now, you've got to think of the runway for growth over that time. Manish has suggested in the past that it's too big. $50 billion is too big because how big is it really going to grow? If you're looking for these multi-baggers, say 10x to 100x, and you do the math on that, it seems pretty difficult. However, Manish does say here that he's, he's not a shareholder of Constellation Software. But he thinks maybe that's a mistake because Mark Leonard can pull rabbits out of the hat. He wouldn't be surprised. 
with Mark Lynn. You can do this. There are companies, if you look at Apple, if you invested in it as a mega cap or a large company, you still would have done very well. And Warren Buffett, uh, Berkshire, did invest in Apple. So there are exceptions to the rule. And he thinks, that, you know, Constellation Software could well be one of those. I mean, he's looking at turkeys, looking at very small caps and uh, hunt, things that can go 100x, 10x, multi-baggers. And so he isn't invested, but he thinks it could well be a mistake. He also mentions that he knows that Constellation Software is looking at other situations, other investments, because Mark Leonard is not necessarily a software guy, although he buys software companies. He is a, he's good at capital allocation in gen, and more generally, so he thinks that it could go in a different direction in coming decades. Over the next two decades, he would not be surprised if Mark Leonard invests in other things apart from software looks at other areas to grow the company. And from my point of view, I'm invested in Topicus, as I said, a European spin-off, which has the same business model as Constellation, but in Europe. And that's a much smaller company, and that's the reason that I invested in that, because I think it could do well, like Constellation has over the last 20 years, but it's still a small cap, so there's a lot of runway for growth in Europe, and there's a lot of opportunity there with a track record, a well-known business model that works has worked really well in North America. In Europe, this is not investment advice, just saying what I'm doing, and that's why I'm going for Topicus rather than Constellation Software at this point. By the way, if you're getting value out of this episode so far, please hit that like button if you're watching on YouTube to help spread it to more people. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks. Monash says that he's not a big fan of roll-ups or serial acquirers. There's a few serial acquirer companies that are popular in the value investing community at the moment and growth investing too, really, because these are growth companies. But he says that Constellation Software and Berkshire, both of those are cut from a different cloth. So conglomerates like Berkshire have been serial acquirers over the years, but only buying the very best companies at good prices. What he's saying here is it really depends on the founder and the capital allocator and the management involved here. In general, he just doesn't like any serial acquirer, but these are different. These are two different companies, very high quality companies. Monash goes into more detail about Constellation Software, saying that they have a list of about 40,000 companies that they could acquire, that they've kind of got their eye on, which is a huge list. And as I said, Topicus in Europe, there's even more companies. I don't know whether he's including that there, but again, Europe's a big market. All those countries, different languages, of course, more difficulty, perhaps. But he says within these companies, they sort of nudge them two or three times a year, which seems like a lot say that if you're ever you know in the market to to sell we'd be we might be interested in buying and he said that's that's similar to berkshire to warren buffett he likes some very good companies very few probably big companies like ikea he mentioned ikea so if you're ever in the market to sell we're interested and again there are many reasons that they might want to sell he talks about the founders getting old perhaps with software companies not so much but there are many reasons why they might want to sell berkshire gets buys companies that are in distress sometimes but these are small software companies generally they're getting bigger with constellation software because as constellation gets bigger they are looking to acquire bigger companies but topicus in europe buying smaller companies so monish points out that constellation might be the only buyer for some of these companies Forty thousand is a big list of these small software companies that can move still move the needle for topicus in particular and constellation monish doesn't talk about topicus but um, obviously, I'm looking at it through that lens. Papro points out that for these companies, these small software companies, private equity is not interested in buying. And venture capital, it's an exit for venture capital, who's put money into many companies, perhaps 10, hoping for one or two. So it's an exit for them. He says that in the sense, Constellation's in the funeral business. And he wrote about the funeral business in his first book, Mosaic. These businesses that want to be sold, that wants to sell to Constellation. And Constellation is good at taking care of them, good at their afterlife, after they've been with the founder, perhaps, or perhaps the founder stays, but in a stable environment and with all the help of Constellation, their network, their uh, backing, their administration. And so they're kind of looking after these businesses that nobody else wants. He says that Constellation has a great mousetrap. They found a great mousetrap and they're the only ones with that mousetrap. So when a software business is bought, they've got seven or eight like it so they can get the what they've learned from the other businesses and say, look, this is what we've learned. This is what we can do for you. So that's pretty much everything that Monish said about Constellation Software there. As I said, it's the first time I've ever heard him talk about the company as a quality business. He obviously thinks it's a great business. 
But what do you think of what Manish said here about Constellation Software? Do you think he's got some really good points? Are you a shareholder? Let me know your thoughts on it. Right? Do you own Topicus? I know a growing number of investors do have found it as a spin-off from Constellation with a big runway. That's how I think of it. Not investment advice, as I said. But let me know in the comments what you think of it or on Twitter at The Art of Value. If you've enjoyed this episode about what Manish has said about Constellation Software, you might enjoy these other episodes. I'll put them up here if you're on YouTube and in the description if you're elsewhere. So watch one of those next and I'll see you next time.